Hello everyone, I'm Tommy with Studio Sense. Today is going to be a viewer requested video. I do have a chart of videos that I like to try to keep up with probably a week or so in advance, but I do take viewer requests as seriously as I possibly can. So if you have any requests you'd like to make of me for list videos or a particular fragrance you'd like for me to review, don't hesitate to leave your comments and let me know what you'd like for me to go over. But today we're gonna to be tackling my top 10 freshies for life. I'll give you my criteria for that, that and more when we return, so stay tuned. Welcome back guys. That's right, today is a viewer requested video. It is top 10 freshies for life. And I only had two things that, two pieces of criteria, I guess you could say, that these fragrances had to meet to be in this list. The first is that they had to be a banger or a beast. And what I mean by that is my experience with each one of these fragrances is that they lasted a minimum of eight hours on my skin, right? So minimum eight hours. First thing. Second is that they had to be in that category of fragrances that we all know and love or hate as the blue fragrance genre. And by blue fragrance, they're well known for being refreshing or fresh. You will hear that phrase, uh, fresh out of the shower kind of fragrance, but just overall general blue fragrances. So that's what I guess you could say the two Bs had to be a banger or beast and a blue fragrance. Very small criteria and that there's a universe of fragrances out there that could be my 10 freshies for life. So without holding you in suspense any longer, let's go ahead and jump straight to the fruit at the bottom of the cup. We'll also do the note trifecta, the most the three most prominent notes for each one of these fragrances to kind of give you an idea of what, you know, where they're coming from. Coming in at number 10 is a fragrance that's from one of my favorite consistent designer houses. And what I mean by consistent is that they're consistently really close to niche quality in terms of their fragrance releases. And that is Issey Miyake. And coming in at number 10 is Nui de Si Blue Astral. Issey Miyake is Nui de Si Blue Astral. Blue Astral is a blue fragrance, obviously, since it's in the name, but it's an interesting fragrance because of its note trifecta. So the note trifecta is going to be leather, amber, and bergamot. Bergamot's a given in, in blue fragrances. In most blue fragrances, you've got that bright, that bright green and yellow citrus that's gonna be right off the top. Bergamot is, is one of the best and most modern fragrance notes in men's fragrance these days, and specifically spring and summer fragrances. So it's no wonder that bergamot is in the top of this, but then you've got a leather note, which typically leather is for more along the lines of like a date night fragrance note or a winter or cool weather fragrance note to give a, a fragrance a little bit of darkness, a little bit of sophistication and potentially a little bit of resinous feel. So that leather or suede kind of gives it a, a darker, rough, like rawhide feel or sensation and it adds some richness and a level of complexity. And that's the reason that it's included in this list because not a lot of blue fragrances have that leather note and it pulls off so well. This fragrance can be dressed up, it can be dressed down. It's as comfortable in t-shirt and blue jeans as it is a coat and tie. And that's a really awesome thing I think about most Issey Miyake fragrances is their quality, very high quality. It is coming in at number 10 and is a great blue fragrance. Very inexpensive too, very easily affordable and accessible. By the way, you'll notice that most of these fragrances were produced in either 2016, 2017, or 2018. So they're fairly new. I kind of wanted to keep it within the last four years, kind of keep it relevant for our time frame. And that's not to say that I'm not using older fragrances in this list too. There are a few of them, but for the most part, you'll notice that they were released, most of these were released within the last five years. So. This next fragrance is not going to come to, as any surprise to anyone. It's in a lot of lists and for good reason. So coming in at my number nine spot is Versace fragrance and it's Versace Dylan Blue. Now Versace Dylan Blue made it in my list for several reasons. First of all, it is very high quality fragrance. Versace prides themselves on making designer fragrances of a very high quality. This also lasts extremely long. It is a banger. I've heard some people give comments like it doesn't last long at all on their skin. I don't know what they're doing wrong, but this is a very excellent banger for the buck, especially. Now the note trifecta in Versace Dylan Blue is going to be 
grapefruit, violet, and ambroxan. One of the neat things about having grapefruit in the top, grapefruit gives it some citrus, it gives it some, some sweetness, but there's also a little bit of bite to grapefruit, so it adds to the longevity as well. And of course, ambroxan gives it that modern spin. Ambroxan can be found in a lot of date night or clubbing, as it were, clubbing fragrances. So it gives it that modern spin, that modern twist. And a note I didn't mention is frankincense. There's incense or frankincense in this fragrance as well, and that's typically reserved for colder or cooler weather fragrances because again, it adds a level of darkness, of richness and complexity to, to most fragrances. And it's adding that, that extra layer, that extra level of intelligence to Versace Dylan Blue and adds to the reason why it is so extremely popular. But again, coming in at number nine. Coming in at number eight for 10 Freshies for Life will also probably be of no surprise to most of you. It was featured just a few days ago by, I think Jeremy Fragrance was standing shirtless on the beach or at least on top of a roof or something, talking about Dolce & Gabbana Porom Light Blue Porom in uh, oh, intense. Yeah, it's a long name. I I don't usually do the whole pour home. I just call it Versace Light Blue Oh, intense, just to differentiate from the original earlier Light Blue. Again, this one came out I think in 2018. It is a fantastic, long-lasting blue fragrance. This one won't let you down. Now, this one I like because it's got a really great aqua or aquatic note to it. It's got a little bit of a salty or a briny feel to it, but it dries down very rich, very light, and very refreshing. But it is a strong fragrance. This one only, you only need a few shots to last you all day long. I don't know about you, but for me, I love any blue fragrance that has juniper berries in it. And, and the way they do it, if it mixes or blends well with the other fragrances, so it's not just full on juniper, fantastic and light blue does an excellent job of this. So that makes the note trifecta in light blue, grapefruit, juniper berries, and amber woods. Yes, again, grapefruit coming in there, really strong as an excellent top note. Juniper berry is excellent in the mid, and of course, amber woods adds that, that warm richness, lightly sweet, especially in the dry down. This is another one of those that can be dressed up and dressed down and is comfortable with that type of versatility, somewhat somewhat of a hyper versatile signature scent that a lot of people use as a signature scent. So that's the reason that it's coming in at my number eight spot. Coming in at my number seven spot may also not be a super surprise to a lot of you, or it may surprise some of you because it is so similar to the fragrance that I just talked about, Dolce & Gabbana's Light Blue, and that is a Bulgari fragrance. It is Bulgari Aqua Porom Atlantique. That's right, the strange circular disc that doesn't sit up on a shelf, but lays down and you have to grab it and see, it gets me every single time. And you think that that was set up as a joke. That was not, I literally just sprayed it on my hand for the second time that I've ever videoed myself with this fragrance. Let that be a cautionary tale to you or a warning that you don't wanna hold it with the words out. Otherwise you're gonna spray the inside of your hand and your hand's gonna smell great. So flip it around. What I love about this fragrance, besides the fact that its presentation is, is awful in terms of how to hold it, but what I love about this is it makes me think of almost everything that you could find if you went for a walk along the beach. So this is another very aqua or aquatic fragrance, but it's a lot more marine than light blue intense. This one actually carries a li little or light salty note and it actually carries that into the dry down but it also has a woody, almost like a, uh, a very driftwood effect or feel to it as well. So again, it's almost like a walk on the beach. Everything that you could find, kind of a resinous, sandy, briny, salty, marine, but very woody and aquatic orientation to this fragrance. As such, it's, it's an extremely, I've talked about this fragrance being able to be dressed up. It's an extremely accessible, versatile fragrance. You can dress it up, you can dress it down. It makes it, hyper versatile for almost every situation, specifically, of course, spring and summer, because as most blue fragrances are, with the exception of those that I talked about having a little bit richer notes in them like leather or frankincense, this one does not have anything like that, but it does make it very, very versatile, a proper signature scent for year round usage. And again, coming in at number seven, Aqua Porom Atlantique. But remember, hold it this way. <laughs> if you're going to spray it so that it sprays out and not in. 
Coming in at number six for my 10 freshies for life, I'm straying a little bit away from the aquatic, the blue or ozonic, and bringing it a little bit closer to home with Prada Loam. That's right. This is a very beloved fragrance. It is known as the luxurious, like luxurious soap, hotel soap fragrance. I think Jeremy and other people have described it with a hint of iris. But the actual note breakdown in this, there's a lot more going on than just like an iris scented or raspberry scented fragrance. Some people say that there's like a raspberry note they get off of this. I don't necessarily get that raspberry. But what the three prominent notes are in Prada Lome, the note trifecta, amber, iris, and neroli. Okay, amber, iris, and neroli. So with that note trifecta, of course, you've got really warm amber with a little bit of sweetness. You've got that bright neroli that keeps it lifting off the skin and of course that that iris which adds a level of intimacy and completeness to this that makes this fragrance supremely unique there aren't a lot of fragrances out there that are similar to Prada Lome. Prada Lome kind of stands on its own and that's why it's in my list and that's why it made it to number six because we're almost at the halfway point this is an extremely important fragrance probably deserves a higher spot to be quite honest but I struggled with where to place all of these actually, to be quite honest, because again, there's, there's things about all of them that I really, really like. There's qualities about each one of them. Prada Alone is an amazingly warm fragrance. When I say bringing it closer to home, I think this is a very intimate fragrance. It could be used as a date night fragrance, but it also is very clean, very refreshing. It almost smells like clean laundry, some people feel. So it, it has a lot of uses, very versatile, definitely gonna be a spring and summer fragrance, but it also could be used in cooler weather up to when it gets really cold, and that's when it kind of leaves off its effectiveness in terms of performance. Another great performing fragrance as well, and again, that's why it makes my number six spot. Coming in at my number five spot in my 10 Freshies for Life is a fragrance that doesn't get a lot of love, it doesn't get a lot of talk, but I find it extremely awesome. I think it's very hyper versatile, I think it's, it's great for what it does. It's actually part of a flanker of fragrances that was first released by Abercrombie & Fitch, and that is First Instinct Extreme. So first you had Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct, which is a great melony spring and summer fragrance, a blue fragrance, and then you had First Instinct Blue, going kind of a more aquatic side, which is a very nice, it's a nice fragrance, but it suffers a little bit, or a lot actually, in performance. That's the only bad thing about that fragrance is the performance. But then they made up for that with the final flanker, and that is First Instinct Extreme. Extreme is everything that you like about First Instinct, but it just stays and stays. This fragrance lasts a good nine hours on my skin. It projects so well, due primarily to the Kawano Melon. In fact, let's look at the note uh, trifecta in this fragrance. So the three prominent notes in First Instinct Extreme, you've got Kawano Melon, Violet, and Amber. Kawano Melon is, is a really nice, gives it kind of like a cucumber melon sensation. And then you've got that, that rich amber, and you've got that violet, giving it somewhat of a, it's kind of a fresh citrusy floral fragrance, but it doesn't cross into the bounds of unisex. It really makes use of that floral to give it a masculine, fresh, appealing, clean. And that's again, why it makes my number five spot. We're at the halfway point and we're getting closer and closer to home. So if you haven't tried Abercrombie and Fitch First Instinct Extreme, I highly recommend picking this up. Right now you can find it at Marshall's. This is the 50 ml bottle. Uh, if you can find the 100 ml bottle, I recommend it. This is my second bottle actually. Uh, so you can get the 50 ml bottle right now for 20 bucks at Marshall's, which isn't, it's a fair deal. It's not, not a wonderful deal, but it's okay because you can get that just a little bit more. You can get the 100 ml bottle at, at fragrance.net or, or fragrancebuy.ca. So either one of those uh, locations, but I highly recommend picking it up if you don't already have it. Coming in at my number four spot, I wanted to use this house this house produces a lot of good fragrances, and it also produces some fragrances that are poor in performance, but it's such a, a solid house in terms of wonderful smelling fragrances. I struggled to pick which one to use, and it came down to what I just wear the most, and that is Hugo Boss Just Different. Just Different came out in 2011. It's one that I reached outside of that five-year boundary, and it is a wonderfully aromatic, fresh, spring and summer scent. Of course, Hugo Boss, when you think of Hugo Boss, you might think of apple because they use that apple note in almost every one of their fragrances. 
and you would not be remiss in thinking that it's in just different. So it, it is just different than their typical like Boss bottle line, but it also has some similarities. So it does carry that typical Hugo Boss DNA. Where this one differs from the others is in performance. I get a good eight hours out of this, and I've even worn it in high heat. We've been 90 degree weather with about 80% humidity this year, and this, this fragrance just keeps going and going. And it is such a wonderfully masculine, woody, yet citrusy with that apple in it, a smelling fragrance. Uh, it is primarily for casual wear, casual day and nighttime wear. I wouldn't use this to dress up at all. It doesn't really have that feeling or vibe with it. It's a great fragrance to wear if you're going skateboarding or hanging out with your friends or running errands. Just pretty much doing anything but date night, not necessarily date night or dressing up. The note trifecta in Just Different is going to be apple, basil, and cashmere. You'll see cashmere in, in a lot of Hugo Boss fragrances. It really warms it up, it richens it up. Of course, it's a, an aroma chemical, but it brings that the, the spices and the citruses together, blends them into something extremely pleasant and masculine that performs great. And that's why it makes my number four spot. All right, guys, we're down to the last three. Coming in at number three is an Azaro favorite of mine and many others, and that is Azaro Chrome Aqua. Chrome Aqua is a wonderful, inexpensive fragrance. When you wear this, it's really hard to believe that it's just so cheap. Uh, and that makes it accessible, and that makes it you know, high up on my list. This one actually covers all bases. It's, it's cheap and affordable and economical. It smells great. It lasts really, really well, and it's hyper versatile. So this is one of those fragrances that you could see becoming your signature scent. This one is great for casual daytime and nighttime wear. It harkens of all the parts and portions that are best of spring and summertime. You can wear this on the beach. You can wear this in an upscale restaurant. So you can dress it up, but again, it's primarily for casual wear. It's got that nice aquatic feel to it, but it also has a, a note that you'll notice that's in a lot of my favorites, just because I, I absolutely love this note and fragrance when it's done you know, well, because it can be super synthetic if it's done wrong but there's an apple note in here. And I think that's a wonderful note. So the note trifecta in Chrome Aqua, unsurprisingly, it is green apple, basil, and vetiver. Vetiver, of course, adding some, a little bit of that dry elegance that is part of this, the green apple, that sweetness to it, and basil, that sharp astringent spiciness to it, which adds to the longevity of Chrome Aqua, and which is why it's my number three in my 10 Freshies for Life. Coming in at number two may surprise you a little bit, but I've been wearing it every day since I got it. I absolutely love this fragrance. It is, a, it is an older fragrance. It came out in 2007. I recently talked about it in a first impressions video, and that is Terry Mugler's Ice Men. Yes, Ice Men. This has been called the patchouli bomb, and in fact, when I first wore it, I literally had sprayed it, I like two or three sprays on my, around my collarbone and on, on some hot spots on my arm like maybe three or four sprays. It's probably more than that, but I'm being conservative. And literally right after that, my, my wife walked by me and she was like, ooh, what's that patchouli? Like she immediately recognized the patchouli. So if you like patchouli, patchouli that's mixed and blended well, you're gonna love Ice Men. So it's like the best of bo both worlds. You've got that metallic cool and you've got that rich warm coming from the amber. Uh, woods in here as well. The note trifecta, quite obviously, in Ice Men is going to be the frosted nutmeg, the iced coffee, and of course the patchouli, predominantly patchouli fragrance. Wonderful, wonderful fragrance. Lasts for a good eight, nine hours at least. Projects really well for the first three hours. Never really becomes a skin scent. It always stays projecting really, really well. So if you like that kind of fragrance, you're going to love Ice Men, and that's why it makes number two in my Freshies for Life. Coming in at my number one spot, I'm probably going to lose some of you guys for my, my number one spot, lose some of my viewers or audience. No, I'm just kidding. It's, it's a wonderful fragrance, and actually, it's, I think that it's great because of the notes that are in it, because of how well it projects, because of the open is amazing. That wonderful, sweet, citrusy, fruity opening. It's a very youthful and invigorating fragrance. And that is from Yves Saint Laurent and it is Y Eau de Parfum. Now, if you've never experienced the Eau de Parfum, you are doing yourself a disservice. You need to try this out. The open is amazing. It will clear a room. It is extremely strong, 
but it, it's very bright because it's very fruit juicy. So it's got a very juicy heart to it. And that doesn't go away. It dries down a little bit because most, most citruses are, and fruits are great for the open, but then they dissipate and you get that into that little bit more richer, baser fixative of a dry down. But the, the, the fruits in this last into the dry down. It is a wonderfully aromatic, masculine, semi-sweet, but very crowd-pleasing, mass appealing fragrance. And I think that's, and I've talked about this before, I won't say a lot about it, but I think that's what the galvanizing thing in the community about this fragrance is. A lot of people are trying to move away mass appealing fragrances. What's been said about this fragrance is I don't want to wear something that everybody's wearing, but I'll be honest with you, in all my travels and in all my visits to places where people are, I've never smelled this on a guy. I'm in East Tennessee though. I don't think a supreme number of men around here wear fragrance, to be quite honest. Maybe there are quite a few, but this still to me is extremely unique. And it's something that if someone does smell it, they may recognize it, but that will be a positive neuro association, not a negative one. So lots of good memories associated with this, even though it's been out relatively less than a year, maybe a year. Fantastic, fantastic blue fragrance. One that I think everyone should own, that every guy should have in his blue fragrance arsenal. Absolute must have, must own. Yves Saint Laurent Y Eau de Parfum. That goes to follow for the entire Y line. I just like the Eau de Parfum simply because it does last so long and it is hyper versatile. Can be dressed up, can be dressed down. Primarily casual daytime, nighttime wear. Very youthful though you might not be into because it's not necessarily a mature fragrance it's more of a youthful and invig invigorating fragrance but since I think youth is your mental attitude doesn't matter how old you are you can rock this out well guys that's it for my 10 freshies for life if you have experience with any one of these fragrances please let me know what you think about them in the comments below if you think I missed anything that should have been on this list go ahead and let me know what your favorites are as well now I did mention that I was gonna do another giveaway and we are gonna do another giveaway, but there's something I need to apologize for. I did mention in previous videos, although I should have mentioned it in hindsight, every time I talked about the giveaway, just so it would be a continuous reminder to you guys that I can only do this in the US right now. Shipping costs are incredible when you go past the US. So for those of you that are entering to win that live outside the US, if you just wanna involve yourself because you want to comment that's perfectly fine so all you have to do to enter to win today is just put in the comments below what fragrance you're wearing so when you watch this video at the very moment that you hear me speak these words just put in the comments below what you're wearing and you're in to win as long as you're in the u.s here in the united states you can enter to win again my apologies for any misunderstanding about that again i did mention it in previous videos i just didn't mention it every time that i talked about the giveaway so you might not have heard it or might not have seen me say it guys again thank you so much for stopping by and watching my video today as always thank you so much for your wonderful support on my channel i'm tommy with studio sense and i'll see you next time